Hey, welcome to another video everybody. If you're new here, my name's Kit. Welcome to my channel. I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. Or if you've been watching my channel for a while and you haven't subscribed yet, I'd really, really appreciate it if you subscribe. Uh, I'm out here on the big lake. Heard the white bass bite was pretty... Ooh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I see stuff jumping. Heard the white bass bite is really good. And there is stuff jumping as we speak. All right, okay, here we go. Come on. Well, they were blowing up. Throwing a spoon. Just a silver spoon trying to match the shad. If that's the way things are gonna start, hopefully I can start picking up some fish here. Oh, they're blowing up behind me now. Why? All the action then I don't know what happened. Let's see if I just retrieve. Oh, there's a tapper. There's one. <laughs> Little guy. First fish. Slow retreat worked. These guys aren't aren't the aren't the big ones I'm looking for though. There's one. Ooh. Feels pretty good. Oh please stay on. Oh, it's a catfish. Was not expecting this. Ooh. Oh, jeez. Yeah, there were some big marks near the bottom, and it makes sense that there were catfish hanging out on the bottom. <laughs> here we go, dudes. She goes back here. Nice channel cat. <laughs> not what I was expecting. You know what? I might keep this one. Yeah, yeah. But I'm marking a whole bunch of fish down beneath like the schools of fish and there's marks underneath all the schools and my guess is of what's happening is uh that the white bass you know as they stun and kill kill all the shad the, the catfish are just waiting out down beneath them Ooh. Oh, right there, Bo, right there. They're going crazy. Oh, sh Damn. There's one. <laughs> oh, they're blowing up. Hey, that's a decent one. Yeah, this guy's kind of bleeding. Eh. Oh. Whoops! <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. There's so there's a bunch of fish underneath me right now. Cheers! There's fish behind me. Let's see if I can jig him up. Oh! <laughs> as soon as I said that, oh, why? There's one little guy. What the? <laughs> what? <laughs> Was not expecting that. You know what? This guy's gonna be bait. So I'm gonna tip a little piece of meat on here. Ice fishing style. This should really entice him, I think. I'd eat it if I was a fish. Oh, come on, dude. That was a good bite. Come on. Try to bite it. Dude. Eat it. Eat it, motherfucker. There's one. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh no. Cut up in my string. That's not a bad white bass. Hey buddy. Wait, I got that camera. I don't know what I'm doing, but here's a another white bass. If I catch one more, I'm gonna go give Bo a spoon.
<laughs> oh, I hope I got that on film. That was crazy. It's right in front of me. Oh, yeah, they're busting. Damn, they're going crazy right now. Nice. Here you go. Just like that, it's over. Piece of bait came off. No more bites. Wow. Wasn't ready for that guy. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Hey, I stole my bluegill again. I was not ready for that guy. Okay, decided I'm gonna try to keep a few. Oh, blown up. Oh, I was just trying to reel up. Wow. <laughs> Water in my face. Another white bass. Good eaters. I think I'm gonna keep maybe one more. You know what? I'm gonna go give Bo a spoon. I'm gonna give you a spoon. Whoa, wow, wow. Dang, he smoked it, dude. Feels like a bigger fish. Oh, a catfish. No way. Wow. Yeah. Man, he must have been hanging out on the surface. So I was just reeling it in. Left my catfish stuff in the truck. Catching catfish. Do you want this one? It's like dope size to eat. I'm going to try the jig. See what the jig can do. Oh. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> mm, switched to the jig and he dunked it. Wow. Way up in there. Yeah, sure. I'm back at home. Uh, I'm about to clean those uh, fish that I kept. I got three white bass and one channel catfish. Uh, I ended up giving Bo that the bigger channel. Yeah, nothing too big. I don't like cleaning big fish anyways. And I personally think that smaller fish tastes better. I'm not even sure if that one's two pounds. Uh, it, it might be two pounds, but I think smaller fish taste better. I mean, within reason, I'm not gonna keep little fish like this to eat. And it's just easier to clean than a giant fish. So the main focus is gonna be the, the white bass, the, the dish I wanna make. I'm just gonna use the white bass for it. I'll still clean the catfish, but I probably won't show that because I'm not gonna be cooking it, not cooking it for this video. So I got my knife sharpened. Uh, I'm gonna wipe down those fish before cleaning them. Got my glove, fillet knife. So I'm gonna wipe this guy off a little bit, get rid of most of the slime. Makes it less messy and just easier to handle. This guy's kind of fat. I think I'm gonna cut him open, see what we got going on there, in there. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a whole bunch of shad or shiners. So I'll just make a slit behind the gill plate. I'm pretty sure you guys seen plenty of filleting videos. So go down the spine so I get behind the rib cage. What I like to do is I don't cut all the way through. And before I take the fillet off, I flip it over to the other side. Go down to the back, hollow the backbone. So I think I'm about right past the stomach. Push it all the way through. I usually bleed all my fish out, but I didn't think that far ahead. That's why there's so much blood. Usually if you bleed them all out, you won't have any of this blood. So that's why I'm a big proponent of bleeding out your fish. I usually don't save the belly meat because the meat that you save is so insignificant. Maybe I'm just bad at filleting. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not very much meat there. So most of the time I don't even bother. That's one side. Flip this over on his back. Ooh, that looks really red. Seems like it's redder on the camera than it is on here. But that's another reason why I bleed out my fish. Well, it won't be as red. I mean, it's still, it's still, it's not gonna get rid of all of the blood, but it's gonna get rid of most of it, and the, you'll have a much wider fillet. There you go, one white bass fillet. I think I got all the, uh, there's a little Y bones in there. I should probably take care of those now. I'll cut this section off right there. So you cut that out, there's like tiny little bones in there. And since I'm not gonna be frying, you're gonna get every bone when you eat it if you leave any bones in, in the meat. So there you have it. 
Uh, two catfish fillets. I figured I'd just put them all together anyways. And six white bass fillets. Let's give them a quick rinse. Look at all the blood up in there. Just rinsing them off gets rid of most of the blood, but I'm gonna take it one step farther. Give them a little salt water. Let me go buy some salt. Uh, sure. So I'll try to do like a little comparison. So got the salt water in there. Water's fairly clear for now, but we'll see what it looks like tomorrow. Time to cook that fish, guys. Uh, first off, I just wanna say that I'm not a cook. I don't claim to, to know how to cook. Today's cook is gonna be a bit different. Um, I'm gonna try to make like a fish salad. I know that sounds that sounds kind of bizarre, but, uh, but there's a Lao and Thai dish called lap. But I'm I'm not sure if this is lap ba, which is fish lap, or goi. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure like a Laos or Thai person will correct me. I mean, this might like what it ended up being might not even be either of those. I wouldn't call it 100% authentic. Because, I mean, I don't know how, like, my mom, if she ate this, she'd be like, oh, what is this? This is not even close. Which, it probably isn't, but I, I think it tastes just fine. Just citrusy, spicy, a whole bunch of herbs, aromatic in there. Well, I was trying to piece this whole thing together. You know, there's tons, of, there's a ton of steps involved here. I think I got it down to somewhat of a digestible, digestible format for you guys to follow. I mean, I'm not measuring any ingredients or anything, so I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of just winging it, honestly. I just, I'll just show you guys how I did it. All right, so it's been a couple days since I, um, since I cleaned those fish, and those fillets have been soaking in that salt water for, for two days now. But yeah, let's, uh, let's see what they look like. I already know what they look like, but I guess I'll show you guys. Water is a bit murky. White bass isn't the most whitest fish. So I'm gonna stick these on some paper towels, then I'm gonna pat them dry. I'm just letting those uh, fillets sit in some paper towels. In the meantime, I'm gonna toast some sticky rice. I got about a third of a cup or so of uncooked sticky rice. Why sticky rice? I have no idea, but it's just the traditional way of doing things. I think I got that on like a medium to high heat. So we're just gonna dump that on there. We don't want this to start burning. We just want it to get a nice toasty brown color. Okay, so uh, the rice is toasted about to where I want it. And it's like super brown. I don't think I need to let it go for much longer than this. So I'm gonna set it off to the side here and just let it cool off for like 15 minutes. I'm gonna get the uh, the soup. I don't, I don't even know if you can call it a soup. Gonna cook the fish in some boiled water and some herbs. I guess that's technically a soup. But uh, to get that ready, I gotta chop up shallot, lemongrass. It's this grass that has like a lemony, citrusy flavor in a lot of Southeast Asian cooking. And galangal. Not to be mixed up with ginger. It kind of looks like ginger, but it doesn't taste like ginger. It doesn't smell like ginger. And the texture is way different from ginger. I think some people would describe it as a little bit more woody. And you don't really eat this on its own. But yeah, I'm just gonna get that prepared. Okay, we're gonna start out with the lemongrass. I'm gonna peel this first outer layer. Kinda dirty, you know, plants grow in dirt. I don't think we really need this top part, so I'm gonna cut that off. I think I'm just gonna cut a couple, couple chunks up here. Sure, something like that. I'm gonna mash this down, get all the juices flowing. And for the galangal, this stuff, I've always hated cutting this stuff. It's really tough. Mm couple slices maybe one more See, as you can tell it is way tougher than than like ginger not the same set that to the side for now peel the outer layer of the shallot and yeah, we'll smash these a little bit too huh huh those juices out Hoots. you have stuff flying somewhere behind me so those are gonna be my aromatics for the little soup all right fish is all nice and dry now I'm just gonna cut down the fish. Well, the fish is gonna break down when you cook it anyway, but I'll just dice these up so they cook faster, I guess. And I feel like I don't have enough fish. All right, remember those uh, aromatics that I chopped up earlier? There goes the galango, lemongrass, one shallot. And then I'm gonna bring that back down to a simmer, I think. Because when I throw the fish in here, I don't want it to be boiling. The fish is just gonna crumble apart. Note that I did not season this uh, water at all. 
I could probably turn that up a little bit. That's gonna simmer for like 10 minutes. Shouldn't take very long. I, I think that toasted rice should be uh, cooled down by now. And now I'm gonna now I'm gonna put it in the food processor or the magic bullet and basically ground it down. I could have did this step like ahead of time, like yesterday or any other time. At least you guys get to see it, I suppose. So when I do this, I don't want it too coarse. Kind of fine, but kind of coarse too. Kind of like that. So the fish is done. I'm gonna go ahead and try to fish the fish out. There's probably a better tool for this. So you're not gonna keep all those uh, herbs and stuff in there. I'll probably fish them out later. I'm not gonna turn this off yet because I'm gonna use this stock. Okay, so now that the fish is cooked, the rice powder has been turned into powder. I have to get the dressing together, chop up the herbs, and then put the whole salad together. So with the galango, so tough. I wanna try to cut it as thin as possible. Oh, that's pretty thin. We're gonna cut it into little skinny, skinny strips. Skinny, skinny little strips. Chop it as fine as I can. Uh-oh, uh-oh, not doing such a good job here. Trying not to cut myself at the same time. Please, please don't cringe. I think ideally you'll want a younger piece of galango. Uh, that might be enough. I wanna say these are bird's eye chilies. Ah, oh, they're kinda mushy. Of course, fresh would be better, but uh, don't rub your eyes after this. So you want shallots? Hopefully these are actually shallots and not little onions. So I'm gonna try to cut these as thin as possible. Oh, I'm starting to cry. This is so beautiful. Got me two stalks of spring onion, green onion. Oh, why is it so extra curly? Come on. And I got some cilantro here now. It's gonna be more of a rough chop, I think, of the cilantro. All right, got some mint here. I'm just gonna tear off the leaves. The bigger leaves, I'll just rip in half like this one. And then for the the last part, I think I'm gonna use like half a lime. Cut it off center so I can get maximize all the juiciness. No, we'll start out with half a lime, see how that goes. So there you go, my herb platter. I think these are all herbs, right? Well, except for the lime and the peppers. So now for the dressing. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the soup stock from earlier. Maybe a little bit more. Just a little bit. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Okay, first thing, Whoop, can you guys see that? MSG, just a little bit. Like, maybe not even half a table teaspoon. But kid, MSG is really, really bad for you. What's that you say? MSG is bad for you? Uh, so is salt and sugar. Here's a little conspiracy time, or a rant. So MSG seems to be like a contentious uh, ingredient when it comes to cooking. I think a, what a lot of people don't realize is that MSG is in a lot in a lot of food. Let's see. Let me look up real quick. Just a five examples here. Hmm. One, Doritos, MSG. Two, KFC, MSG. Chick Fil A, MSG. Four, Pringles. Five, Campbell's Chicken Noodle Soup. Gravies. Like tons of stuff has MSG in it, but it seems to only be a problem when it comes to Asian food. I don't know if you guys noticed that or not, but it's always like, oh, Chinese food, MSG, blah, 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 blah. So, but in reality, it's in a lot of food that people eat like every day and they don't even bat an eye. But then when they hear MSG, they just think of Asian food. My thing is, I think it's like, it was like propaganda back in the days. Probably, probably not so much anymore. So just do a little research before you just automatically think like, oh, MSG, Asian food, bad. Did those foods that I mentioned, um, are, they, are they healthy for you? No, but I mean, I don't think the MSG is the worst part in those foods. It's not as bad as people think. It's actually the, the fifth flavor. So you got salt, sweet, sour, spicy, and savory, which, or umami, which is, which is what MSG is. So there's that little spiel I had. Uh, anyways, back, back to the dressing. One tablespoon of fish sauce. We'll just start with one. Uh, I'm not totally sure what I'm doing yet. So here comes the galango, the chilies, the shallots. Oh yeah, and the fish sauce, 
is a it's a weird one for for most Americans. It just sounds weird. If you eat any Southeast Asian cuisine, it's gonna have fish sauce in it, or it's it's one of the big ingredients in Southeast Asian cooking. Right, so there's one ingredient in here that I'm not adding, and that is called barak, aka unfiltered fermented fish sauce. Um, and I know that one for sure. Um, that the American palate, it's it, it'll literally be hard to swallow. But that is in a lot of Laos cooking. Like on its own, I wouldn't eat it. But it's in a lot of stuff. Well, for the limes, actually, it might not even taste right without the that badak sauce. But oh, I'll try it without it. We'll see how it goes. The camera turned off, but uh, I just went ahead and tossed in all the herbs and stuff. And then for this, I'm just gonna give it a kind of a dusting. Well, this is like a lot of herbs for the amount of fish that I got in there. <laughs> Maybe I should have used that catfish too. Well, I'm gonna give her a taste. A little bit more of this. A splash of this. And another squeeze of this. I'm give it another, another quick little toss. Usually it's darker than this. I, mean, I think it's because I didn't put the, the fermented fish sauce in here. I don't know. It's, it's something. <laughs> you know what? A little more fish sauce. Why not? Not bad. So now it's time to plate up my fish salad. We got a plate of brown rice and some lettuce. As you guys can tell, this is a uh, pretty healthy dish. It don't look too shabby. Kind of like, kind of like ceviche when you think about it. Here you go. Here is my fish salad. Stop, stop focusing on me. There's that. lettuce you know what that turned out pretty good I wouldn't say it's a hundred percent authentic to um, the way like my mom or the OG's as we call them would make it but not bad so you put that on like a little bed of lettuce come on stop looking at my face oh there we go mmm mmm yeah, that was a lot of work. Wow. Okay, okay. Let's let's gather my thoughts here. I mean, I I could have gone the easy route and just did some kind of fried fish, you know, pan fried, deep fried. Of course, this is way healthier than uh, frying your fish. I'm not I'm not trying to push like some some healthy thing or anything. I just wanted to do something different. Cause the only thing I could compare it to is if if you like ceviche, you would you would like this. Hopefully my instructions were clear somewhat. I don't know, I'm kind of just winging it. I think in the future though, I'm gonna use more fish. Cause I think my herbs, herbs and veggies to fish ratio kind of favored the herbs and veggies more. And as far as the, the fish goes, uh, white bass has a pretty bad rap of being fishy, you know, and having a strong flavor, but in this, it is not fishy at all. All I did was boil the fish. I barely altered the taste of the fish until I got it in that dressing. The fish is super light. You know it's there, but you, you can't, you can barely taste the fish, honestly. So if you're still here while I'm trying to gather my thoughts and whatnot, um, appreciate you watching. If you like this video, give it a like. If you want to see more, hit subscribe and uh, I'll try to, I'll try to mix it up. Can't go wrong with frying fish and throwing in a sandwich or whatever, but I'm going to try to do different things here and there. So until the next video, I'll see you guys.